What's up, everybody, and welcome back for another Big Easy Bets College Basketball Play of the Day. It's Saturday, March 2nd. Uh, buckle up because we are going to have a lot of games today. Uh, we're feeling good. Last time out, we had another two plays. We cashed them both, so we've now hit four in a row. We're completely back on track. I told you all it was the line of demarcation. Uh, me and my wife were expecting our first child. Since then, we haven't lost a bet. I might have the luckiest baby in the world. Uh, we're going to try to keep keep that momentum going. Uh, it is now officially March, the best month out of the year. Uh, the tournament's right around the corner. Who's in, who's out? We're going to find out a lot about that today. Uh, but let's get to it. We're going to have multiple plays. Villanova taking on Providence. This is a huge game for both teams. This is one of those... Uh, if you win, you're probably in. Uh, Providence is projected as the last four in. Currently, Nova is the last four out. The battle of Eric Dixon and Josh Adoro down low. Uh, that's going to really tell the tale in this one. Uh, for Villanova, their second leading scorer, TJ Bamba, does have a facial fracture and is a game-time decision. My guess is they're going to put a mask on him and he will play. As somebody who had a facial fracture playing basketball and had to wear a mask, it's tough. I wasn't as good as TJ Bamba. He'll probably acclimate much better than I did. Um with that being said, I'm going to go back to the Friars here uh, on the home court. If Devin Carter's on his game, the one-two punch of him and Adoro should get us there. Uh, like I said, Dixon's very good for Villanova. They're playing good basketball as of late. Uh, they've turned it around down the down the stretch, but I think the home court is going to be the difference here. Two really good defensive teams. Uh, we'll take Providence minus two and a half. Second play, Kansas taking on Baylor. I'm going to get right to it on this one. We are going to take Baylor with the points minus five and a half. They've had some impressive outings. We saw them battle back against Houston going to overtime. Uh, then a really impressive road win against TCU. I don't know if you if you follow TCU, you know, they're very tough to play on the home court. Uh, so that was a really good win for Baylor there. Um, I just don't trust Kansas's offense. That's really what this boils down to for me. I'm not saying they can't score because they can. You'll see them come out and drop 80, 90 points one game, and then you'll see them drop 60 the next. Uh, Kevin McCullough's not super consistent. I know it's hard to say. He's leading the team in points nearly 20 a game. Um, it's just... It's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I don't trust it. I think it's a bad matchup because Baylor shoots the ball very well. They shoot it a lot. They shoot it very well from deep. Uh, but then you got Kansas, 169th nationally, and then pair that with 133rd ranked perimeter defense. I just don't think it's a very good matchup. We're going to lay the five and a half points here with Baylor. Um, third play, Illinois taking on Wisconsin. Earlier in the season, Wisconsin looked like they were going to be a top team, a top tier team in the Big Ten. They haven't looked that way lately. They've lost three of their last five with all three losses coming on the road. Illinois is averaging a whopping 84 points per game, but their defense has been non-existent lately. In, in their last four games, they've given up at least 80 points. We're going to back the Badgers here, uh, believe it or not. Minus three on the home court. Uh, they play much better, much, much better at home than they do on the road, as we've seen lately. Last time we were on uh, Wisconsin, we had a minus one and a half. They blew a 20-plus point lead, their biggest loss this millennium. So they owe us one. We're going to take the Badgers minus three. Next play, we're going Creighton versus Marquette. One of the bigger matchups of the day, clearly, both teams top 25 in offensive and defensive efficiency. Marquette wants to run a gun. Creighton is more methodical at 235th in tempo. Um, with that being said, though, we're going to go with the over. one Over 153.5. While Creighton does move slower, they make up for it by attempting the seventh most three-point shots uh, in the nation. They, they make them at a very high percentage. Sure, they have multiple guys that can score the ball. Uh, they Both teams also have sustainable ways of scoring around the rim with Kalkbrenner and Igadoro. Xavier, last time when they when we saw them take Marquette, we had the over in that game. Uh, we just missed it because Xavier, when running the break, was scoring at will. Then they decided to go to their half-court offense, and they really struggled. The difference here is that Creighton has multiple guys that can score in the half court. Uh, you've got, obviously, Shireman. You've got Alexander, who can get you a mid-range jump shot at will. Kalkbrenner, very well, very good around the rim. Um, pair that with multiple guys that can shoot from the outside. We're going to go over 153 and a half here. I think um, there are points to be had against Marquette. If you run and gun, Creighton will know that. I think we see him match the tempo a little bit here. Next play, Gonzaga taking on St. Mary's, one of the later games of the night. The Zags are essentially at win and in, at win and you're in territory. So this would be a huge road win. St. Mary's already has the number one seed in the WCC tournament locked up with a win or a loss. It doesn't matter. They were cer they're certainly going to make the tournament in March. So they don't have as much to play for. That doesn't mean they're not going to be up for this game because they will. This is Gonzaga, a team that has dominated this conference for years and years and years. Anytime you can get one over on them, you're going to be up for the game. 
with that being said, we are going to back Gonzaga getting points plus two and a half here. Um, they were three and a half point favorites against San Francisco. They blew them out of the water, and that was with a late push uh, down the stretch from San Francisco to put some points on the board, which cashed our over by a half point. It was a miracle, 17 points in two minutes, but that's neither here nor there. We're going to take Gonzaga plus two and a half. It's a do or die moment for the Zags and Mark Few. Uh, I think we see him rise to the occasion and at least keep this one very close down the stretch, if not winning outright. So, Give me Gonzaga plus two and a half. And our final play of the day, Tennessee taking on Alabama. Sears versus Ziggler and everyone else versus Dalton Connect. That connect. That's what this boils down to. Bama bounced back after uh, a, a tough loss to Kentucky where Kentucky just blew the doors off of them. They bounced back in a big way thanks to a dominant second half. Um, I don't like Adu down low for Tennessee. We just saw Johnny Broom manhandle him down low. Completely outplayed him. He's not. He, he's very weak down on the low post. He doesn't rebound the ball well. I don't know that Alabama has somebody that can exploit that like Johnny Broom did, uh, but I think rebounds will be up for grabs. I think, I mean, you know who Alabama is. They shoot a ton of threes. It's either at, it's either behind the three-point line or it's at the rim. If Dalton connect, if he's on or if he's off, somebody else is still going to have to step up and score. Um, but if they can, if they can make his life difficult, I don't know that Tennessee is going to be able to hang uh, hang in with this one in terms of scoring the basketball. So we're going to take Bama minus two and a half. It's one of the few two and a halves left. I think it's FanDuel. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take that one. I think uh, I think we see Alabama defend the home court. They're finally back home after a couple games on the road. So to recap, we're going Providence minus two and a half. We're going Baylor minus five and a half. Wisconsin minus three. The over 153 and a half in Creighton Marquette. Gonzaga plus two and a half and our sixth and final play Alabama minus two and a half we've cashed our last four we're completely back on track we got to go out and have a good Saturday it's March so there's money to be made and we're going to make it good luck Thanks.